If you're into old places, you could do far worse than spending a day in the city of Stirling. One of the first things you'll notice if you come here is Stirling Castle. The oldest surviving part of the castle was built in around 1381. Through the years, the castle changed hands many times during the wars of Scottish independence. But in 1314, the English surrendered the castle after King Robert the Bruce's victory at the Battle of Bannockburn. I was going to show you Bannockburn too, but it's just a big field to be honest. There is a visitor centre there though, and there's a nice big statue of Big Rab. Worth a visit. Anyway, just to the north of the castle on Moat Hill, you'll find the Beheading Stone. I don't need to tell you what sort of things happened there, but there is a bit of scepticism as to whether this is the same stone which was around in the 15th century. But I had a look at the stone, and there are quite a few chip marks on it, so it must be legitimate. On the opposite side of the River Forth, on top of Abbey Craig, stands the National Wallace Monument. A 67 metre high tower built to commemorate Sir William Wallace, who was perhaps most famous for helping Scotland to victory at the Battle of Stirling Bridge. I don't remember seeing a battle on a bridge in Braveheart. Hmm. The bridge in which the battle took place is no longer standing. The original bridge was a few hundred yards upstream of the old bridge, which was built a few hundred years later, but still stands today. Anyway, you can actually climb to the top of the monument. You will have to tackle the 246 spiral steps, but the views over Stirling are worth it. You see, there are more old places in the city of Stirling than there are old people. This is just a few of them. Bye for now.